It is time for our weekly rants and raves of the week. Kelly, starting with you. All right, so uh, a conversation uh, has been sparked uh, by uh, one photographer looking at the work of Tyler Hicks. Tyler Hicks was in, happened to be in Africa and took some photos of the, of the Westlake Mall horribleness that went on there with people being shot. And subsequently, the New York Times published one of his photos, quite graphic. Well, you know, you can see it here on the front page. And the question was, would they do that if it was a white American? So this, and this was raised by another photographer who is all, Tyler Hicks is white, this other guy's white too. And he said, it just seems to me that when it comes to Africa or, you know, there's a different standard, a different ethical standard. Uh, Kenny Irby of the Pointer Institute went on to comment to say the browner the face is, the further away it is, it seems like you don't have to be, have to use some, some restraint. And the, the photographer that raised the question, the other guy said, I'm not saying they shouldn't take the pictures. Of course they should take the pictures. He said, I'm saying that the editors need to have some restraint about how you present that. These are somebody's loved ones. You know, why should we clearly be able to distinguish who they are in such a horrific way? This has come up before, I know, but um, it's an interesting discussion. I, th I think that the standards have been changing. Um, the Times also played very prominently a pretty graphic picture of somebody who'd been shot to death in Times Square yeah. in recent months. I don't know whether it was on the front page of the print edition, but it was certainly on the home page for, for a while. Um, and the guy who fell into the, the, the post? The yeah, the post. absolutely. So I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's definitely something we ought to be thinking about and talking about, but I also think those standards are changing a little bit. Well, I think that there's definitely a different standard of what you can find online. I mean, as we know, when um, the I can't remember his name right now, when he was beheaded, then Danny, you know, Pearl. San Danny Pearl, thank you. Yes. Those pictures were available online, but people did not put them on the front page. The question is, is there some different restraint one needs to have when, it's, when you're talking about the front page? Mm. All right. I, I'm actually going to jump on uh, what, because I don't know, I hope I don't know if the, I'm screwing up their order here, but um, my rave was actually going to be for Tyler Hicks because this uh, photographer, as you all must recall, was also the man who just happened to be with New York Times reporter Anthony Shadid yeah. when he died mm. covering the war in um, Libya. And uh, he, he helped him carry his body over in, in, in line. He has been in every mm. hot spot in the world at the exact, I mean, he, he lives in, in Africa, so I guess he was near them all, but what are the chances yeah. that he, this, this uh, you know, Pulitzer Prize, I don't know if he's Pulitzer, but award-winning uh, photographer would, would be there, and then talk about putting yourself in harm's way, went right into the thick of things and started taking pictures. So I And his wife's a photographer. He, he called her and said, come here and bring the equipment. There, and, and she took pictures, too. Made it very real. Yeah. The most yeah. vulnerable yeah. journalists out there are yeah. the photographers. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ray, what do you got? Well, I, this is kind of a classic rant. You know, I feel like maybe this should be a comment at the end of the show or something. But um, just like we all do, reviewing newspapers to see how they're treating certain subjects, I've just been amazed at how poor the coverage of the health care hmm. law hmm. has been. I mean, hmm. we've seen, a, obviously, a lot about the health care law and Ted Cruz and everything else. But the whole question of what the need is and how it's going to be met by this law, I think, has been really poorly covered. Um, it's a rant that is tied around a rave. I also want to kind of excuse the Globe in a way because, I, first of all, I think the Globe has done an exceptionally good job of doing this, and they don't have quite the same desperate need to cover this because mm. we have the model here mm -hmm. in, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts has the model. But there is one organization that's been doing a spectacular job, and news reporters have been drawing on that, and that's the Kaiser Family Foundation, oh, yeah. mm. which has this organization called Kaiser Health News. They hired a bunch of good journalists. They've got terrific mm -hmm. people. The advisory board's led by Leonard Downey from uh, ASU, and... Um, and uh, they just do a fantastic job. Is it job. broken down state by state? Can you see the... Not, I, you know, it is because they'll do stories. Their biggest story now is on California, I mean, which in itself is an enormous story. But um, it, it... So they break it down by states when they do individual stories. But... Um, and in some graphics, it is. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Dan, what do you got? I have the correction of the year. And it's only <laughs> September. Uh, the New York Times this week uh, ran a correction to an obituary that it published about the founder of Nintendo. And I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, but it turns out that in the obituary, they quoted from their own 1988 story that improperly identified uh, Mario and Luigi from the Super Mario Brothers game as janitors when in <laughs> fact they are plumbers. Oh, gosh, so, uh, How do you, you come know, back from that? <laughs> you, you know, I mean, Western civilization is, uh, is they has been saved. They actually ran a correction. They actually ran that correction. A perfect example of we don't care. I mean, it's just accuracy above all else, even if, even if people are just scratching their heads. <laughs> Wait, you got to give them credit for that. Yes. They do, because a, a, a lot of newspapers don't run any corrections at they all. They must have been That's laughing right. when they put it in the paper. They had to have been. Yeah. That's right. I mean, there was probably some with... troll, you know, Mario Brothers, you know, guy who, who noticed it and said, Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They should have run two corrections, though, because they had the 88 and then they had the late one. Right? That's so, right, exactly. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right. Dara? Uh, this is a rave for the late art. Buckwell, um, syndicated columnist, humorist, who was always very upset that he never made Nixon's enemies list. Mm -hmm. And we learned this week in declassified documents from the NSA that he was, in fact, on the NSA watch list, being listened to like Martin Luther King and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so he'd be thrilled. Oh, and the dumbing down of the enemies list. Now we're all on the NSA's list. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, th there you go. He wanted to be listened to. And I bet they listened to him because he was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. His book was I Chose Capital Punishment. And so finally it pays off <laughs> to have been capitally punished. If anybody goes to and looks that up, you know, about the NSA, there's also a great posting that still exists that he, he, he it's a YouTube video now of him saying, if you're, if you're watching this video, I'm dead, which was actually very clever. It was very Art Bookwaldus, but mm. as you pointed Hi, out... Hi, I'm Art Bookwald, and I just died. Yeah, so they, the New York Times... Yep. Was it the Times who put that It together? was the Times, yeah. yes. And it was kind of sad They did a series already... of video all bits, and uh, he was game for it, even though he was very sick when he made it. Yeah, mm. it was classic, I have to say. It was mm. classic. All right, thank you all, and that is it for Beat the Press. Keep commenting on comments. <laughs> what do you think? Should news organizations dump the comments or curate them better. Give us your comments at beatthepress.org. Monday on Greater Boston, we know biking in Boston is challenging, but is there a solution for sharing the roads? On the heels of several recent cyclist deaths, we revisit our right-of-way series. That's Monday at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.